Hey again, this is Stephen Robles, and now we're going to start setting all the individual parental controls for your child's devices on their iPhone or iPad. Now keep in mind, if you have multiple devices per child, let's say you have a teenager and they have an iPhone and an iPad, as long as it's the same iCloud account logged into both devices, when you change a parental setting, it will affect all their devices, across their devices. Even if you have a Mac and they have an account on the Mac computer, the same screen time settings will apply to the Mac. So it syncs all across their devices, which is great. So to start setting individual controls for your child's screen time or parental controls, and again, screen time is just the term for parental controls on Apple devices, we're going to go back to settings. Now again, you can do this from your iPhone or your iPad, doesn't matter which device. I'm doing it on my iPad so you can see it a little bigger. So I'm going to go to the settings app, and then I'm going to go down to screen time. Again, if you're in the settings, you'll see your name up at the top, some other settings, and then there's the screen time option. If you were to change the settings on this screen, these are actually your screen time settings. So if you actually did want to schedule certain things like if you only want to do a certain amount of time on social media apps, you can actually set controls for yourself. But we're setting it for our child. Now, if everything was set up correctly in the iCloud family, you should see your child here. Now, if you're having trouble getting the iCloud family set up and you're not sure what to do there, you can, on your child's device, go to the screen time settings in the settings app and adjust everything here and it will still apply on their device and it'll still have all the restrictions that you set up. So if you can't figure out how to do it remotely or syncing, if you have their physical device, you can go to screen time and change the settings and then set a special passcode that only you know so they can't change the settings. So right now I'm gonna go to my son who's in my iCloud family and now these are changing his settings for his devices. Now, you'll have a number of things on this setting screen. First, you can actually see how much time they're spending on their devices, including how often they pick it up, how many notifications they get, and how long the screen is on. Now, the first setting we're going to change is downtime. And so you'll see downtime here in the settings, and I'm gonna tap that. Now, I'm gonna teach you how to set this up in a moment, but I have a special screen time passcode different from the passcode he uses to unlock his device. So he can unlock his device, obviously, and no one knows that passcode except for me and his mom. But you can then put a special screen time passcode that's different. So if he were to ever try to change the settings, he doesn't have this passcode. This is different than the one used to unlock the device. So I'm going to put in the screen time passcode that I've set just for parental controls. Now I'm going to enable downtime. So if you don't have it on, you can swipe that toggle to the right and that will enable downtime. Then you can do the same time every day or customize per day. And I'll explain what downtime means. You're setting a time of day, probably sometime in the evening. So let me explain what this does. When downtime starts on your child's device, she or he will not have access to any apps except the ones that you approve during downtime. For instance, if you don't want him to be able to access YouTube from this time to this time, then you can set that. Now this is different than a time limit on an app where you only want him to access two hours of YouTube and no more. And we'll learn how to change that in a minute. But this sets a specific time of day where the device basically shuts down except for the apps that you choose. Now I have the same time set every day but you can do it differently on customized days. So for school nights, you can start downtime at 9 p.m. or 8 p.m., whenever you'd like. But on the weekends, you can have it start later, like 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. I have it on the same time every day because I set time limits for certain apps, and we'll get to that in the next video. But then you choose the time. So I have it from 11 p.m. to 9 a.m. That means from 11 p.m. to 9 a.m., Every day, he only has access to certain apps like messages, phone, maybe FaceTime. And those are the only apps that are active. And if he wants to use an app other than those that I've said are always allowed, he has to send a request, which will come to my phone or my watch, or he just doesn't have access to it. The whole app will just be down. So you set that. And then the bottom is block at downtime. 
that last toggle means the apps are then blocked during those times. So as you'll see here, I have it set for every day from 11 p.m. to 9 a.m. and it's going to block during the downtime, meaning he will not have access to the apps that I specify. And so that's setting the downtime app. Again, this can be different for every child as you go in and set it, but it does apply to all their devices. So if they have an iPhone and iPad, it will be applied to both. Now I'm going to go back. The next section is called App Limits. Now when we go in here, you'll see that we can set time limits for certain kinds of apps or all apps. So for instance, I have a games limit right here, but you probably won't have anything because we're just starting to set it up. So I'm going to tap Add Limit. Now you get a bunch of different options for the kind of apps to limit. Now you can set limits for all the apps on the device and you could say no more than two hours a day cumulatively across all apps. So if they watch an hour of YouTube and then play an hour of games, their two hour time limit is up and they won't have access to any apps unless you approve. Let's say we wanna limit the social networking apps specifically. I'll tap that and you'll see suggestions come up for social networking apps. Now messages and FaceTime I still want them to have access to it, so I'm just going to choose Facebook. If you want to limit all the apps under the social networking, you can do that too. Once I've selected the app, I'll hit Next, and now I can set the limit for every day. So if I say I just want them to be able to spend one hour on social media apps every day, I'll set that to one hour. Again, you can customize the days, meaning on weekdays, maybe they have one hour. On weekends, maybe they have two to three. And then the toggle means block at end of limit, meaning once they hit that limit, and they'll get a warning 15 minutes before their time is up, that they won't be able to access that app for the rest of the day, unless they send a request, then I approve it, or their mom approves it. And then you tap add, and now that app limit is set. And you can do that for all the individual apps, for groupings of apps, however many limits you want, different time limits, different apps, and all that. So that's how you set app limits. Now, I'm going to jump to one more section, and then we'll stop in this video so you can set some of those settings and then come back later. The last one I'm going to do this time is Always Allowed. This Always Allowed section under the communication limits. This sets what apps, even during downtime, they can access. So even if it hits 10 p.m. or 11 p.m., whatever you've set the downtime to be, these apps will still function. So I have phone, messages, FaceTime, contacts. I have some school-related apps. You know, they want to get up early in the morning and they want to do some schoolwork. It's fine by me. They can do it. Uh, also music and some note apps and writing apps, again, if they want to do some schoolwork or listen to music. And then if you scroll down, you'll see all the different apps that you can add to this always allowed section. And once you've added it here, even when it hits that downtime at 10 p.m., 11 p.m., these apps will stay active and they can use it as much as they want. The last part in the always allowed section are contacts. What this means is once they hit that downtime limit, you can say you can't contact anyone else at this point except for these few people, or you can only contact people in the contacts app. Now, I have their contacts app locked down, so only I can add contacts to their device, and we'll show you how to do that in the next video. You can also choose specific contacts, so only these few people can communicate via messages, phone, or FaceTime during downtime, that 10 p.m., 11 p.m. to whatever morning time that you set. You can choose the contacts from your contacts, choose contacts from your child's device, or you can add a new contact if you're just setting up something brand new. So once it hits downtime, they can only contact and communicate with the people that you designate in these settings. So that's setting downtime, app limits, and always allowed. Now I'll let you get those settings set up, work on those, and in the next video, we'll finish up the rest of the settings for your child's devices.